Hello everyone. This video covers sections 10.1 and 10.2, uh, which will be correlation and regression. So we're going to start with uh, correlation. So what does correlation correlation means? Correlation is pretty much the measure of the linear uh, relationship. between two variables between two variables and this should be linear okay. so the two variables we want to have here are x and y and this is very similar I mean this is the same x and y that you have in in algebra there are three things that can happen here Let's say that the data looks like this, which you can see uh, that as x increases, y is increasing. So then this will be a positive correlation. This, remember, is called a scatter, scatter plot. So if the scatter plot looks like this, then that means you have positive correlation. Another way to think about positive correlation is this, as x increases, y increases too. So that would be positive correlation. If x increases, y increases. The second case would be something like this. So you could have a scatter plot that looks like, like this, which you can see that as x increases, y is decreasing so this will be negative correlation okay now a typical example of each of them it will be something like this let's say this is the number of tamales that you eat this is the weight so according to this, there is a correlation between the number of tamales and the weight, which you will see right now that a correlation is not going to imply necessarily that this is causing this one. An example of negative correlation will be this. The more you exercise, in theory, the less that your weight will be, in theory. All right. The last case will be something like this, where the scatter plot looks kind of flat like this. In this case, the correlation will be will be zero. So this will mean no correlation or zero correlation. If you actually go back to, to algebra, remember when you were talking about the slope, a line that is flat has a slope of zero. If the line is going up like this, then the slope was positive, so hence the positive correlation. And if the graph was going down, the slope was negative, so hence the negative correlation the next obvious question should be well how do we um how do we measure this and we are right to our last um parameter we talk about these parameters the whole semester mu p and sigma square everything else we did was related to this so finally we'll talk about the last parameter which is called rho, so this is the name of the parameter, rho, but it's going to be the correlation coefficient. Remember, this is the parameter. You usually don't find the parameter. What you find is an approximation. Remember, for mu, you find x bar instead, because x bar is an approximation for mu. 
instead of p remember you find p hat and instead of sigma square you find a square so in the same um using the same approach as this then rho is going to have an approximation which is going to be called r so this is the population correlation coefficient and r is going to be the the sample correlation coefficient okay. just like uh, these ones were approximations to this the first thing you need to learn about the correlation is this the, the correlation has to be between minus 1 and 1 all the time hence the approximation has to be between the two the difference is that since this is an approximation this can never equal to to 1 if you are in a this side this is called perfectly or this is perfectly positive correlated and obviously if it is here it will be negative correlated in a perfect way remember that the one we're going to find is actually this which is going to be an approximation to the other one or to this one and the main difference is this one doesn't have the equal sign if you actually get r equals to 0 0.9999 do not run this just leave it like 0 0.991 because if you put one you're going to have issues with the calculator before we uh we go and try to figure out how to actually find r which is the goal of section 10.1 one thing that is very important is this very 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 important let's say that the correlation of two things is equal to zero for example let's say that this is again tamales and this is weight if this was the actual scatter plot and if this was the actual data then you can say automatically that this doesn't cause this so this is this is very very important if not the most important thing in this chapter so if the correlation is equal to zero so if the correlation is equal to zero then you can automatically say that x doesn't cause y or that x is not related to y however if the correlation is not equal to zero which would be something like this the most common mistake people do is they look to this graph and they say well the more tamales you eat the more your weight is going to increase and that may not be the case all this means is the there is a correlation between the two variables either in this case or in this one but that doesn't mean that x is causing y so the point is if there is a correlation the correlation doesn't imply so if this is not equal to zero it doesn't imply a causation which means that if the correlation is not equal to zero, you cannot say that x is causing y. But if the correlation is equal to zero, you can say that x doesn't cause y. And I know this can be a little confusing, so let me repeat this one last time. If the correlation is zero, you can automatically say that x doesn't cause y. Or clearly x is not related to y but if the correlation is not equal to zero that doesn't imply that x is causing y it just means there is a relationship between x and y but it doesn't mean that one is causing the other okay so this is very very important this part okay so let's see how you find the the correlation so this is the formula for the correlation in its uh, three different quantities s of x y s of x x and s of y y and here are the formulas which they look a little intimidating but this is actually pretty easy you have actually done this before 
Remember from section 3.2, this is the formula from section 3.2. The formula for the variance was this, the sum of x squared, remember the sum of x squared over n, everything divided by n minus 1. And if you look closely to this, you can see, for example, that this is exactly the same thing as all of this. So this is not really new. The difference is that now you have to do it for x, for y, and then for x, y. So pretty much you could rewrite this formula as just, um, sorry, this formula as s of x, x over n minus 1. Now, a few things that you have to be aware is this. S of s, x always has to be positive so if it is not positive you check you need to check because something is wrong this one always has to be positive also this is the only one that can be positive or it can be negative so it's okay either way but these two always have to be to be positive okay. all right so let's do an example to see how you can find the correlation usually you will be given a table like this, because remember you're trying to find the relationship between x and, and y. So the first thing you need to do is uh, complete all of these values, which is it's pretty easy, and then find the sum of all of these. Here, x represents the number of cups of coffee, and y the number of hours that the person sleeps. Okay, so stop the video and complete this. For example, this will be 1, because 1 squared is 1. This will be 81, and then x times y will be 9. Once you complete the table, it will look like this. Uh, remember that this uh, means the sum of each, uh, each column. For example, 32, this is the sum of y. This will be the sum of x, y, and so forth. Okay. All right, so let's find these values. S of x, x, this one, this one, and this one. So let's start with S of x, x. So S of x, x is equals to the sum of x squared minus the sum of x squared divided by n. n is equals to 5. Because you have one, two, three, four, five columns. I mean, five rows. So therefore, this will be fifty-two. From here, the sum of x squared is fifty-two minus the sum of x, which is fourteen squared divided by five. Once you simplify this, this is around twelve point eight, and that's it. Remember that this value has to be positive. This is positive, so you're you're good. Now, S of y, y is equals to uh, the sum of y squared, which is this one, so that will be 2, 2, 4, minus the sum of y, which is this one, that's 32 squared, divided by 5. Remember that this one also has to be positive, and this gives you 19.2, which is, which is good. And then finally, S of x, y, this is the only one that can be positive or it can be negative. Remember, this is the sum of x, y minus the sum of x times the sum of y, everything divided by n. So it will be 79 minus 14 times 32 divided by 5. Be careful with the order of operations, and this is around minus 10.6. By the way, uh, I just told you that these two all have to be positive. This one and this one. And this could be positive or negative. You can tell right away from here that this is um, going to be negative because as x increases, y is decreasing. So the, the scatter plot will look like this. It will be going down. So that's how you know it will be negative. All right, so once you have found this value, this one, and this one, to find R, or the correlation coefficient, all you have to do is plug it into the to the formula. Remember, the formula is equal to this, S of x, y, divided by the square root of S of x, x, times S of y, y. So this will be minus 10.6, 
divided by the square root of 12.8 times 19.2 and this is around negative 0.68 which means that the correlation is negative which should not be surprising because you can see that x is increasing and y is decreasing and that's how you find the correlation which you can see is pretty pretty simple the calculator actually can do all of these too but you have to be careful because the calculator may not do this separately and i may ask you to find this and this and this separately on the test so you still need to know how to do this by hand but the calculator can actually compute the whole value at once just look to the workbook now if i ask you for the correlation this is all you have to find and end of the story however on the next page we're going to need this information from here everything we're going to do in this problem depends on this table and in this these values so x bar remember is the sum of x divided by n which is equals to 2.8 so we're going to need x bar and therefore y bar should be the sum of y which is 32 divided by 5 and this is around 5.4 and we're going to need this in the next page. Okay, Just remember that. So you need to find it ahead of time. Once you uh, find the correlation coefficient, the next goal or the next thing you want to find is an equation to predict, predict things, which is going to be called the equation of best, best fit. Now, it doesn't matter what equation, what line you draw through here you want to make a mistake so therefore you want to make the you want to find the equation that has the smallest mistake and that's what the equation of its fit is this is usually called the regression line but this best fit means the equation that has the smallest square error and this actually may require calculus, but you don't have to worry about calculus or anything at all. Everything is already given here. This is going to be the equation of S fit, which we're going to call y hat. Remember, the hat is an approximation, so this is an approximation to y. And for algebra, this will be mx plus b. So all you have to figure out is what is the value for the value for m and the value for b. And the formulas are already here and this is just using the information that we use it right now so this is very simple if you did all the work from the previous page all you have to do is literally plug it in so for example it says use the data from the previous example to find the following the equation of best fit well the first thing you need to figure is the value for m m is going to be s of x y over s of x x well, remember s of x y was minus 10.6 from the previous page this was 12.8 and this is around minus 0.83 then the value for b is going to be y bar minus m times x bar remember i told you to find the value for y bar and x bar in the previous page the value for y bar was 6.4 minus the value for m which we just found right now to be minus 0.83 so this is minus 0.83 and the value for x bar which was 2.8 from the previous page also remember that minus minus gives you plus so when you simplify all of this you end up with 8.7 so therefore the equation of best fit is going to be y half equals to m, which is minus 0.83, x plus b, which is the y-intercept, and in this case is 8.72. And here we go. This is the equation of best fit. As you can see, this is very easy once you have found all the values in the previous, previous page. The next thing is asking you to do is predict the value of y which is just a different name to say find y hat remember y hat is an approximation to y 
So it's asking you to find y, y hat when x is, is 2. So all you have to do is plug it equals to 2 in this equation. So therefore y hat is going to be equals to minus 0.83 times 2 plus 8.72. And once you simplify, this is around 7. Remember that x was the number of cups of coffee. And uh, y was equal to the number of hours of sleep. So therefore, what this means is that if somebody drinks two cups of coffee, you expect them to sleep seven, seven hours. Okay. okay, once you know how to find the correlation, the next step is to check if the correlation is actually statistically significant. So we're going to do hypothesis testing, just like we did in Chapter 8. Here the claim is always going to be this, that rho is equals to zero, which means, remember, no correlation and remember no correlation automatically means that x doesn't cause y but if there is a correlation which would be this case well it just means there is a correlation it doesn't necessarily mean that x is causing y all right so remember for every uh, hypothesis test there is always the claim which here it is. This is actually given to you and it will be given to you on the test. Then for the step two, you need a test statistic. So in this case, this is the test statistic is T star. So since this has a T, that means we're going to use the T table to find the rejection region and the, the P value if needed. And you already have all this information. Remember from the last, um, the last two pages, R was equals to minus 0.68. And m was equals to to five. So if we plug in the values here, we end up with minus point sixty eight square root of three divided by one minus minus point sixty eight square. Now, here you have to be very careful with the order of operations. Remember that every time you square something, it becomes positive. So technically, you always gonna subtract the value here. And by that, I mean this is going to be equals to minus 0 0.68 times the square root of 3 over 1 minus 0 0.68 square. So this is always going to be minus. You're never going to do plus because you need to square. And when you square, it always becomes positive. Once you do this, this is around one negative 1.6. Negative because of this value right here. So that's the test statistic, or T star. Remember, this is the test statistic. Remember, in step three, we always find the rejection region. Since this is not equal, remember, this means that this is uh, two tails. And if this is two tails, remember, alpha has to be divided by two. So therefore, the rejection region is going to be plus or minus t of alpha over 2 with degrees of freedom. Now, in chapter A, the degrees of freedom was always n minus 1. For this one, the degrees of freedom is going to be n minus 2. And this may look confusing, but it's actually pretty easy to remember because it's in the formula. You look to the formula, it is right here. So the degrees of freedom is going to be n minus 2. So for this case, therefore the degrees of the, the rejection region is going to be plus or minus t of point zero two five. Because remember the al the value for alpha is point zero five. So you divide by two, you get point zero two five, and the degrees of freedom is going to be three, which is going to be plus or minus and three point one eight two. Then just like before. Draw the rejection region. Okay. So the rejection region is uh, minus 3.182 and 3.182. So 
so if it, if it is here you reject it if it is here it's also rejected so this is the rejection region and so is this and this part it will be the fail to reject h o now in this particular case the value for t star is negative 1.6 so negative 1.6 is somewhere here so therefore the conclusion it will be fail to reject h o which implies that there is no evidence to reject the claim that rho is equals to zero, which implies, remember, no correlation. But remember, there is what this means is there is no evidence to reject that this is the case. It doesn't necessarily mean this is this is true. And that's it. And then if you want to do the the p value. Remember the p-value, remember you had two choices, you can use the table or you can use the calculator. In either case, step one and step two are the same. And in this case, the p-value will be twice the probability that t is greater than the absolute value. So it will be twice times the probability that t is greater than 1.6. If you use the calculator, this will be 2 times TCDF, 1.6 to 1,000, with 3 degrees of freedom, which is 2 times 0.10395, which is around 0.2079. So that's the p-value. Remember, this is a step three. For the step four, the p-value, uh, you compare the p-value with alpha. The value for alpha is 0 0.05, or you can add to zero. So clearly, this is greater. And remember, using the same rules from chapter eight, this means fail to reject H O. Remember that if you don't have a TI 83 or 84, you can use the, the table. So you are using the, the table. The p-value has to be approximated. It will be around twice the probability that t is greater than 1.6. Okay, remember you have a 3 degrees of freedom. So we look to the, the table for three degrees of freedom. 1.6 is actually here. And if the number is was between here and here, you pick something between here and here. If the number was here, you pick something between 25 and 50 and so forth. If the number was here, remember you pick 0 0.001. However, if the number is here, you just use point, point 0.2. That's it. That's not the exact value, but it doesn't matter because all you need is an approximation. So in this particular case, then the p-value will be approximately 2, 0.2, which is equals to 0.4. So this will be step 3. Then for step 4, the p-value is 0.4, which is clearly greater than alpha, which is 0 0.05. And the conclusion is exactly the same, fail to reject h o. So remember, you have a calculator. Uh, this may be a bit easier, but you have a table, you can do this, which once you know how to use the table, the calculator is actually maybe a little bit, bit faster. Okay, so it's up, to, it's up to you. All right, let's do one last example related to this. This one is the same idea, except the information is given in a completely different way. But all you need to know is what is n, which is 20. And this time, they give you the correlation, so you don't have to even find it. They give you these values, too, but you don't really need it right now. Remember, step one, the claim is there is no correlation, just like before. And the alternative is that there is a correlation. So in step two, you need to find a T star. We'll write the formula one more time. Okay. 
So we plug in the values, we get negative 0 0.59 times 18. Why 18? Because n minus, I mean 20 minus 2 is 18. This will be 1 minus 0.59 squared. When you simplify all of this, this is around uh, minus 3.1. Then step 3, you need to find the rejection region. Check in is going to be plus or minus, because remember this is two tails. Plus or minus t of alpha over uh, 2 times the degrees of freedom, so this will be 0 0.025. And the degrees of freedom is... 18 and this is plus or minus 2.101 then draw the rejection region same same story from before we have 0 minus 2.101 2.101 again if you are here it will be rejected if it is here, it's also rejected. And this part is the fail to reject HO. In this case, uh, the value for T star is a negative 3.1. So that means it's on the rejection region. So the conclusion will be reject HO, which means rho is not equals to zero which implies there is no, which implies that there is a correlation, which implies that there is a correlation between the hours spent in social media and the GPA. That's it. And you can also do the, the p-value. If it doesn't ask for two methods, you can stop in this one and that's it. You can always do the p-value the exact same way with the previous one. So for example, here if we use a calculator for step three, the p value will be twice the probability that t is greater than 3.1. Remember, you always use the positive amount. So it will be two tcdf 3.1. The upper bound will be a thousand. We have 18 degrees of freedom, and this is equals to a uh, 0.0062 once you multiply by by two remember the last thing you do is you compare the p-value with alpha alpha was 0 0.05 so clearly this is less and less means uh, reject ho and again remember you can also use the the table and you will end up with the same same conclusion. So this is if you use a calculator, and if you want to use the table, it should be around the the same thing.